Take a look, folks. These cars have been in stock here for three years. Some are even celebrating their fifth birthday. But they are all brand new, now going for a bargain in a clearance sale. Ever wonder why electric vehicles took a price dive this year? Well, check this out. Look at all this inventory. These are the latest models sitting in the dealership parking lots. Last year, the fierce competition among gasoline vehicles really took a toll on electric ones, leading to this outflow of what used to be the best sellers. Nowadays, fewer people are buying cars, so the inventory moves slowly. A lot of these cars, if not sold now, will soon become dead stock. The only solution? Cutting prices. So yeah, when I say electric vehicles are going to see major price cuts this year, I mean it. It's a sure thing because of the oversupply. In recent years, with the rise of new electric vehicle factories in China, a significant number of existing ones previously focused on producing gasoline cars have seen a dramatic decrease in their capacity utilization rates. Some of these factories have fallen idle or even been sealed off, earning the moniker zombie factories. Analysts predict that China's automotive market could see hundreds of such zombie car factories over the next decade. Data from Shanghai-based consulting company Automobility shows that China produced 17.7 .7 million gasoline vehicles last year, a 37% decline from the peak in 2017. Bill Russo, the founder of Automobility, indicated that the cliff-like drop in sales of gasoline cars means up to half of the industry's capacity, or about 25 million vehicles, went unused. While some older factories will be repurposed to manufacture plug-in hybrid or electric vehicles, others will permanently seize car production, turning into zombie factories. This scenario poses challenges for both domestic and foreign enterprises. Russo noted that many of China's automotive groups face a dilemma. Either let the factories halt production or manufacture some vehicles to then ship off to markets like Russia or Mexico. The sharp decline in sales of gasoline vehicles has severely impacted modern automakers and their subsidiaries like Kia Motors, with the total sales in China plummeting from nearly 1.8 million units in 2016 to just 310,000 units last year. According to reports from Chinese financial news outlet Yi Chai, among 16 Sino-Foreign joint venture automakers, only 5 had capacity utilization rates above 50%, while 8 had rates below 30%. Brands like Dongfeng, Peugeot Citroën, Chang'an Fort, GAC Mitsubishi, Ueda, Kia operated with less than 10% capacity utilization. The drastic drop in production and sales is a direct cause of this extensive idle capacity. Public data reveals that in 2023, China had an overall passenger car production capacity of nearly 55 million units, while the average annual production over the past five years was about 23 million units, including exports bringing the overall capacity utilization rate to under 50%. Gasgu Automotive Research Institute forecasts that this year's passenger vehicle market sales will reach about 26.5 million units, a 1.8% increase from last year's 26 million units. Although this represents a slight growth, it is minimal compared to the annual production capacity of 55 million units. Chen Yudong, a Bosch Group board consultant and former president of Bosch China, stated that over the next decade, Closures, production halts, mergers, and transformations will become the norm. As early as 2022, Zhu Huarong, the chairman of Chang'an Automobile, predicted that over the next three to five years, 80% of China's gasoline car brands would face closure, halts, mergers, or transformations. Reports indicate that joint venture brands heavily reliant on gasoline cars may see further declines in capacity utilization rates this year if their transition to EVs lag. Analysts from Gasco Institute predict that in 2024, Japanese, Korean, and American automakers could also face more overcapacity issues. To date, the capacity utilization rates of Japanese and Korean car manufacturers have plummeted from 74% in 2017 to 45%. Korean automakers, in particular, have experienced faster declines in capacity utilization rates. For example, Beijing, Hyundai, and Kia have a combined capacity of nearly 2 million units in China but this year's projected production is only 330,000 units, less than 20% utilization. According to forecasts, Toyota, Honda, and Nissan, the three major Japanese brands, are expected to produce about 3.2 million units in China in 2024, a decrease of 500,000 units from last year, potentially reducing their capacity utilization rates to 51% and 
an 8% drop from the previous year. Meanwhile, American brands Ford and GM also faced challenges in the Chinese market, with sales continuing to decline for several years. Predictions indicate that Chang'an Ford and Saic General Motors will produce about 940,000 units this year, a reduction of 300,000 units from last year, with overall capacity utilization rates dropping to around 30%. The issue of overcapacity has also spread to the new energy vehicle sector. As market competition intensifies, the new energy market is entering a new round of bankruptcy waves. In 2023 alone, automakers like WM Motor, iWays, Innovate, Baoneng and Evergrande went bankrupt. By the end of last year, the combined annual production capacity of these five companies was about 720,000 units, yet the actual output was less than 10,000 units. These idle new energy factories also face closure or conversion. However, this merely scratches the surface of the capacity underutilization issue within the new energy vehicle industry. According to data from Gasku Automotive Research Institute, the overall capacity utilization rate for new energy passenger vehicles in China was only about 47.5% in 2023. Data from the China Passenger Car Association, CPCA, shows that in February, sales of new energy vehicles fell to 388,000 units, down 11.6% year-on-year, marking the first decline in recent years. The primary reason for this downturn was attributed to the Chinese New Year holiday in February and the pre-holiday surge in vehicle purchases in January. Amidst overcapacity, automakers have been forced to slash prices. Since the beginning of last year, a price war has engulfed China's domestic car market, growing increasingly fierce as 2024 progresses. Following the end of the Chinese New Year holiday, prices of new energy vehicles in China have been cut across the board. According to Voice of America, BYD led the charge by reducing the price of its models priced around 100,000 yuan by 20,000 yuan, dropping the starting price to 80,000 yuan. This move compelled competitors to follow suit with price cuts. In the streets of Harbin, Heilongjiang province, dealerships of major brands such as Geely, Wuling, and Chang'an saw price reductions ranging from 10,000 to 30,000 yuan. The average price cut of 30% for new energy vehicles not only forced gasoline cars to be discounted to clear inventory, but also dealt a harsher blow to used car dealers. Chen Ziang, a director at Leon Energy in Taipei stated, In China's electric vehicle market, at least 75 car brands have been eliminated over the past three years, and it is estimated that another 60 to 70 percent will be eliminated by 2025. The price war is hurting new brands and small to medium-sized manufacturers. Amidst the fierce price war, data organized by the China Association of Automobile Manufacturers shows that from January to November 2023, the profit margin for the automobile manufacturing industry was 5 percent a decline of 0.7 percentage points compared to the same period in 2022. According to a report by Chinese media, experts predict that on average, car prices in China could drop by 30% over the next three years. Automotive analyst Wu Pei observed that the trend of price cuts among car manufacturers has reached a frenzied pace, with companies moving to lower prices, overlooking profits and long-term growth in the process. Only after this wave of panic-induced price cuts will the survivors have a chance to catch the breath. However, after this wave of price reductions, the pricing system may not return to its previous state and operating on thin margins may become the norm. Additionally, there are issues of false advertising. For instance, some automakers exaggerate the range of their electric vehicles. Some car models also face contractual issues, with some operators unilaterally setting contract terms or breaching contracts and infringing on consumer rights. On January 16, Zhu Huarong, chairman of Chang'an Automobile, stated at the Chang'an Automobile 2024 Global Partners Conference that the competition in China's automotive industry is fierce. Automakers use exaggerated and false advertising tactics to attract consumers. For instance, certain commercials employ special effects and editing to convey an illusion of speed for models that aren't particularly fast in acceleration. Others portray economy cars in luxury settings with actors dressed in high-end fashion, making them appear as luxury vehicles. And some automakers pay high endorsement fees to celebrities who have not personally experienced a product's quality and performance, deceiving consumers and violating business ethics. He believes that within two years, there will be significant changes in the automotive industry. China's domestic production of new energy vehicles has reached nearly 10 million units, with a penetration rate of over 35%, but the industry overall is suffering severe losses. Among the more than 70 passenger car brands, only four or five are profitable. 
Moreover, not only are major automakers reducing prices in an attempt to sell their vehicles, but there are also continuous reports of companies halting production. On March 6, Holzone Auto's production base in the Qingshu Industrial Park in Nanning, Guangxi, fully ceased operations. Employees stated that the Nanning factory had been closed for nearly 20 days. The shutdown of the factory was partly due to the temporary lack of need for so many production lines, and because Nanning does not handle the production of new models Holzone Auto plans to launch this year. In Nanning, Holzone Auto has been deemed a significant landmark project by the local government. However, the sales have remained sluggish, with the company reporting a delivery of only 6,000 new cars in February 2024, marking a 39.6% year-over-year decline and a 39.3% drop from the previous month. Holzone Auto also experienced poor sales performance last year, with total sales reaching 127,500 units, a 16% decrease from the previous year. Meanwhile, another electric vehicle company, Hi-Fi, announced a six-month halt in production on February 18th. Hi-Fi, a luxury smart electric vehicle brand under Human Horizons, was launched in 2019 with the ambition to set a benchmark for luxury electric vehicles globally. The company boasts a team of over 5,000 employees and more than 17,000 high-end users. Its founder, Ding Lei, has extensive experience in the automotive industry, having held positions such as general manager of Shanghai General Motors and vice president of Saic Group. Hi-Fi currently offers three models targeting the high-end market including the Hi-Fi X electric SUV and the Hi-Fi Z electric sedan. However, Hi-Fi sales have been disappointing, with the Hi-Fi Y model only recording sales of 1,021 and 1,556 units in August and September 2023, respectively. In contrast, similarly priced competitors like the Li Auto L7 and L8 sold tens of thousands of units per month. In December of the previous year, Hyundai Motors sold its factory in Chongqing for approximately 1.6 billion yuan, less than half the price initially sought when the factory was listed for sale in August at 3.7 billion yuan. This sale comes as Hyundai's market share in China continues to decline, with potential to fall to 1.4% in 2023 due to factors like competition for domestic brands, Chinese manufacturers getting government subsidies, and geopolitical pressures. Hyundai Motor Group stated that the sale of the Chongqing factory is part of a global operational restructure aimed at shifting focus from the turbulent Chinese market to other Asian countries like India and Indonesia. This move follows Hyundai's sale of its Beijing factory number one in 2021, reducing its manufacturing footprint in China from five factories to three. Lee Hung Koo, director of the Jongbuk Institute of Automotive Convergence Technology in South Korea, mentioned that the Chongqing factory has been incurring losses and the Chinese automotive market is facing a problem of oversupply, with no one willing to purchase the factory at a high price. Here, the once thriving Quoros automobile factory in Changshu has ceased production, leaving the plant desolate. The areas once used for parking produced vehicles are now empty and abandoned, with some areas still housing rows of unsold cars. Quoros Automobile was established in 2011 with a team composed of engineering and management experts from 23 different countries, many of whom had significant positions at renowned automotive companies such as Volkswagen, GM, and BMW. Quoros automobile sales plummeted in 2019 with only over 20,000 new cars sold, marking a 63.4% decline from the previous year. The launch of the new Quoros 7 model in 2020 failed to significantly boost sales, which totaled only 13,000 units that year. Sales halved again in 2021 to just 5,200 units, averaging less than 450 units sold per month. By 2022, Quoros' monthly sales had dropped to double digits and a large number of 4S stores had closed, essentially putting the brand in a state of limbo. Indeed, data from the China Passenger Car Association confirmed that Quoros's Changshu base has ceased production. According to the latest CPCA data, Quoros's production figures were zero in July 2021, with a total production of only 1,927 units from January to June 2021. Among these, no Quoros 3s were produced, 15 Quoros 5s were produced, and 1,912 Quoros 7s were produced. The intense price wars in China's automotive industry has exerted additional pressure on traditional car manufacturers, leading to rapid market share losses for major brands such as Nissan, Honda, Toyota, Volkswagen, and GM. Volkswagen reported a total sales volume of 1 million units from January to November 2023, a 14% decline compared to the previous year 
It was not until November that Volkswagen managed to halt its downward trend with a slight year-over-year -year increase of 0.98%. General Motors reported a retail sales volume of approximately 2.1 million units in 2023, marking an 8.9% decline from the previous year. Faced with massive production capacity problems and insufficient domestic demand, China has been exporting a large volume of low-priced products abroad, with new energy vehicles being particularly affected. The Financial Times reported that since joining the WTO in 2001, China has benefited from developing its foreign trade economy through low-cost goods. However, due to the current slump in the domestic real estate market, weak consumer spending, and a depreciating yuan, the export prices of Chinese goods are falling at the fastest rate since the 2008 financial crisis. Chetan Segal, lead portfolio manager of Templeton Emerging Markets Investment Trust, stated, China will be exporting deflation to the rest of the world and will find various countries dealing with the fact that China has built up overcapacity. Many economists believe this has the most impact on emerging markets, especially those with vital trade relations with China. Reports have highlighted increasing complaints from Western manufacturers about unfair competition from China. BYD, China's largest automaker, announced price cuts of 5% to 15% for its electric vehicles in Germany. Mercedes-Benz has issued warnings about the brutal impact of the electric vehicle price war on its profits. Analysts from FIM Partners noted that Beijing has spent 20 years eliminating or pushing out competitors from emerging markets and now poses the same threat to manufacturers and developed economies. Consulting firm Alex Partners reported that between 2016 and 2022, the Chinese government provided $57 billion in subsidies for electric and hybrid vehicles, a key factor behind China becoming the world's largest producer of electric vehicles and surpassing Japan as the largest automobile exporter. Tan Jing Yuan, a political commentator based in the U.S., told the Epoch Times that the Chinese Communist Party supports the strategy of subsidizing overseas price dumping of goods to dominate the market, allowing the CCP to gain political leverage and economic benefits over other nations. Analysts suggest that the existence of zombie factories pose numerous problems and challenges for the entire automotive industry and its related supply chain. With an oversupply in the car market, these factories' capacities are not fully utilized, leading to a waste of resources. This is also resulting in the reduction of jobs in the automotive supply chain, affecting the livelihoods of blue-collar workers. Furthermore, the existence of zombie factories is negatively impacting local economies, including reducing tax revenues and pushing away investment opportunities.